What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, I don't know why do I have to continue to explain this, but then I do understand why I have to continue to explain this. Because you have people pushing false narratives in the sport of boxing, which is nothing new. Um, this narrative, people are in my inbox. They continue to hit me up and they continue to push this false narrative without using any type of sense of common. And that is people continue to reach out and say, why did Shakur Stevenson sign? with Matchroom, Matchroom CEO and promoter Eddie Hearn and DAZN, knowing that's going to hinder a fight with Javante Tank Davis. And people are saying this because a false narrative is being pushed that Shakur Stevenson is ducking Javante Tank Davis because they can't fathom actually standing on honesty and standing on their square and actually holding Javante Tank Davis accountable. So therefore, they have to push this false agenda and narrative on Shakur Stevenson because there is no explanation, rhyme or reason, as to why Javante Tank Davis simply just didn't make the fight. And so Shakur Stevenson signed to fight Joe Cordina, and William Zapata in October and in February. What does that mean for the Tank Davis fight? Well, this is what it means, people. It means that he still can fight Javante Tank Davis at the same time he was going to fight him if he didn't fight Joe Cordina or William Zapata. Tank Davis is schedule to fight and come back in November. After November, Javante Tank Davis typically is not going to come back to the ring until at least, the very least, April. And if he comes back that soon, that would be a shocker. But more than likely, Javante Tate Davis is going to return to the ring around May or June. Okay? So that means that if he fought in November and Shakur did not fight Joe Cordina or William Zapata, he still wouldn't fight Tank Davis until May or June. So Shakur Stevenson fighting Joe Cordina in October which was rig originally supposed to be William Zapata. Now fights Zapata, who pushed the fight back, he and Oscar De La Hoya, to February. After he fights Zapata in February, March, April, May, June. That still gives him four months. And if it's in May, it still gives him three months. So he's still on schedule and on par to be available to fight Javante Tank Davis, Barring he suffers some major injury in one of those fights. And if that's the case, he wouldn't fight Javante Tank Davis anyway. So therefore, just like Javante Tank Davis announced in November that he was going to fight Ryan Garcia in April. And then announced after he announced the Ryan Garcia fight April, he announced that he was fighting Hector Garcia in January. So therefore, he announced the major fight with Ryan Garcia prior to him, before he announced the fight he had coming up first with Hector Garcia. So he announced that he's going to fight Lomachenko before he even got in the ring and fought Frank Martin next. So now <clears throat> he couldn't begin negotiations to fight Shagor Stevenson. Now, here's this narrative that he signed with top rank so that he didn't have to fight. Uh, excuse me. He signed with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom so he couldn't fight Sh uh, Tank Davis. Well, Eddie Hearn explained to you guys 
And I'll explain once again. He has been advised by Shakur Stevenson to not engage, will not be involved in any negotiations regarding Javante Tank Davis, which means he has the flexibility and the mobility and the freedom to engage and fight Javante Tank Davis if Javante Tank Davis wants to make a fight without Eddie Hearn's involvement, period. So Eddie Hearn, Shakur Stevenson is letting you know that Eddie Hearn won't be a roadblock. Furthermore, Shakur Stevenson being with Eddie Hearn doesn't prevent anything. It shouldn't prevent anything because remember Javante Tank Davis negotiated a fight out of the blue, out of the, out of nowhere. He negotiated with Eddie Hearn to fight who? A welterweight, two weight classes above him who was fighting that junior middleweight. In Connor Ben, Connor Ben is signed to Matchroom exclusively with Eddie Hearn, Matchroom in the zone, and he negotiated a fight with Eddie Hearn to to fight Connor Ben. He even instructed Eddie Hearn to then contact Al Heyman in behalf of him to let him know that they had been negotiating a fight with Connor Ben. That's the same Eddie Hearn. He had no problem negotiating with Conor Ben and Eddie Hearn to fight Conor Ben. Now, all of a sudden, Shakur Stevenson with relationship with Eddie Hearn prevents him from fighting Javante Tank Davis? Give me a break. Knock it off, man. Have some sort of morals in the sport of boxing. This nonsense to prevent to see the best fighting the best and out of fear and pushing agendas is disgusting, man. Again, Eddie Hearn is not stopping the show with Tank Davis. Tank Davis is stopping.